Altman is a true artist. He, he never does anything the way other people did in the past or would be doing it. I mean, he, he has his own vision. And, uh, and it's marvelous to, to work with, with a man, you know, who has this kind of a vision and, and, and can tell everybody around, around him, you know, around the, and the crew is all for him. The actors are all for him. Actors would do anything for him. There's no actor in the world, I think, that that he he could not call and 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 say that be in my film because they all love to work with him, and many 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 people work for nothing in his films, you know, for minimum wage just to be able to work with a genius director like his. I was born in Hungary. I escaped from Hungary in 1956. Took me 10 years to get into the motion picture film industry here. But finally I got in and, uh, and I would say that I have a lot to thank actually for Robert Altman that uh, I got what I got because he gave me basically my first big movie but I shot in my life, which was McCabe and Mrs. Miller. And after that, we did images. And then uh, the third one was uh, The Long Goodbye. Mr. Marlowe, the lights in your car are on. Oh, yeah. Working together with, with the director, uh, I always feel that there is a certain territory which belongs to us, to cameramen. And it's definitely the lighting is, is the one which usually directors don't really meddle into that territory because because I think they leave that for the camera and the cinematographer, you know, to, to really deal with that. Also, maybe, you know, I feel like that, you know, directors are not really that much interested in getting technically involved with the lighting. Because that's, that's a, a full-time job, basically. That's our job on, on a set. And it takes 100% of our time, really, to light and create the mood. And then, you know, we can talk about that there's also a production designer who is also very, very important. So it's almost like I would, I would say it's, it's like a triangle. The visual aspect of, 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 of the movies really depend of, on the, the cooperation and working together with these three people, actually. Without a good production designer, there's nothing there to shoot, basically, for me. I mean, true, there's lighting. I can do some lighting tricks and all that, but still, you have to have sets, you have to have locations, you have to have good locations to create the mood. So, 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 so basically, I love to work with directors and I love to work with production designers. Altman's movie looks so different from each other, it's, it's amazing, like, like somebody else did it, you know. So he required that also from his cinematographer to, to come up with ideas and we certainly did come up with ideas with, with, with Robert, you know, from the beginning of, of uh, shooting back by Mrs. Miller when we developed actually the flashing technique. And uh, there was a scene, for example, on the beach in a big party scene where, where Altman said, what can we do here? What can we create a little bit this golden Hollywoodish look? And I jokingly, I said, you know, because I didn't really believe it the first time and I said it that, well, Robert, why don't you just uh, flash 50%? He says, that's right, that's a great idea. <laughs> and, and I was stuck, you know, with this idea because it's very difficult, actually, to, to shoot something, you know, with that, that kind of a flashing because flashing had so much gray into the film and you lose the contrast. And, you know, in order to get a, an acceptable image, I had to uh, overexpose a little bit the film. So that was, the flashing technique already was invented when we did the long, long goodbye, basically. But we always have to create a different mood for a different story. And uh, that, that can be done in many, many ways. Uh, with lighting, with, uh, with flashing the film, with, with pushing the film, like, uh, by increasing the contrast in the film. 
today's style is, is a little bit different than, than in the old days. You know, it was interesting that that today's style almost goes back to the old technical old days. You know, I, I find it find the colors and the contrast very harsh today in movies. And it's not really my liking, you know, this style of today. So if, if I would do another movie, probably I will, I will look into flashing again. My, I think in the future it might you know, even happen that people will get tired of this contrasty look and will go back again to something more natural. No. Moving the camera. That depends a lot of times from the director. And many d directors actually set their camera angles, set their camera moves, and enjoy doing that. Because this is part of their strategy also, that how they actually uh, stage the actors, uh, how, how they move from point A to point B. That's part of it where the camera has to be at that time. And, and with, with Robert also, you can add also one, one more thing to it. He loves the zoom lens. He really invented to shoot with, with zoom lenses. I don't think that before Altman there was any feature where they used the zoom lens so much. And he didn't even mind sometimes to, to use the zoom and make it look like it's a zoom. So he incorporated this style in his movies, which later on, myself, I used it a lot. And, and with many, many directors who hated the zoom lens, I still use the zoom lens by by telling them and proving to them that that you use the zoom lens, but you don't have to make it look like you are using a zoom lens. It's a help, actually, because I can build, actually, a dolly track parallel to the set. And when I'm, 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 I'm dollying from left to right, for example, at one point I start zooming in into a person. It makes it look like it's a diagonal dolly and not like you know a parallel dolly. And nobody will know the difference. I mean, you can really watch those uh, uh, shots, really, to really point it out that that was done with the zoom lens. You know, since, uh, since we uh, moved the camera in all directions, and uh, at the beginning, maybe it was disturbing for, for the actors to see that camera moving. You know, it, it, it could be, dis I mean, disturbing for them, you know. I, I, I personally pre pre prefer the technique, you know, when the camera is actually far away, well, not too far away, but far away enough and not move so much so the actors actually can get into their roles and almost forget about that there is a camera there. But, you know, good actors can get used to anything. We started to move the camera. It was disturbing at the beginning. They, they got used to it. And also they gave them more freedom this way because since we didn't have really uh, uh, marks mark for the camera and mark for the actor, we could basically shoot a scene without marks. And, uh, you know, we, we had an actor, actually, a, a, a wonderful actor, Sterling Hayden, who, who was so great in this movie. I loved him so much. And, 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 and uh, knowing that he was always afraid hitting marks, you know, I, I heard that, you know, from, 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 from Robert, that that don't give him any marks, actually. That I, I kept telling him that, that Stanley, you can go any place where you really want to. Don't worry about where you, have to, where, you, where you have to stop. You don't have to stop any place. You just do your thing the way you want to do it. And, and he did it, actually. And at, at the end, end of the movie, actually, he, he thanked me so much. And he said that, Wilma, this was the first time in my life when I felt so comfortable because I, I Never had to hit any marks. And what a magnificent scene that was with just the invention of the, that whole scene, the way Robert figured it out, you know, with the dog and with the cane, Sterling's cane, and the dog's, dog actually brings the cane out of the water, which actually is it's a symbolic that, that he died. The challenge for us was that it happens in the middle of the night. So we could not shoot it at magic time because the scene was too long to, to shoot it within a 10 or 15 minutes period, no matter how many cameras would, would have used, you know. So we decided that we have to light it and, uh, and it's very difficult to shoot 
an ocean scene where you cannot put actually cleans into the water. I mean, maybe today they could they could actually do that if you have a big boat and put some big cranes and put some night light there or, or busco light or whatever. But of course, this was not a big production. We could not really even think about it. So our solution was to to send the boat out there with 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 a and with the generator on it, and then we put a light, light on it, which occasionally occasionally was was actually aimed at the camera, so we had the reflection in the water. So we gave we gave the the, the the picture a depth, you know. So it was it was something beyond the darkness, and uh, we could actually light the waves. The waves actually lit from both sides of the, of, of the camera. You know, it was like uh, 50 yards to the right, 50 yards to the left. We we put actually on the shore two brutes, which uh, today we would use actually uh, ATK HMIs probably. And those brutes actually lit up the waves, especially when they're breaking, you know, they picked up the light. So it, it, it gave you a good illumination for, for night. And it looked actually like the lights were coming from um, the houses or from, from the house we were shooting from, you know, which was lit for night. On some other street, two people meet as It was fun to work with Robert because he was so creative, you know. Every single shot, every, every everything you know. The way he likes to make movies, the, the atmosphere on the set, what he creates. Watching dailies together always. He he never restricted actually uh, the, the project projection room you know for people who wanted to see dailies. Uh, in McCabe and Mrs. Miller, sometimes we had 80 people watching dailies. You know all those people who lived in that town. They all came to, to, to this big, huge screening room in, in Vancouver with their kids, actually, and dogs and cats, you know. It was like a happening, you know. Every day was, was like a happening and, and such an atmosphere, you know, that, that it doesn't exist today, actually. Today we can we hardly see dailies. You know, it's all in, in, in videotape, in, in VHS. Imagine that. In those days, we watched dailies in a big screen and we were so happy because we were we felt that we are part of a part of a of a creation here, that part part of a, an, a film of art, and 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 we lost that you know we lost the the joy and the happiness of making a film, and you know as as an aspiring director maybe in the future because I'm you know thinking maybe that I will direct I will always think a lot about Robert Altman how to be a good director, how to get people e excited about you, about the project, how to make everybody give you 100 percent, you know, for, for, for that movie, and uh, how to talk to actors, how to get a performance out of the actors, how to get your cinematographer work for you and do exactly what I have in my mind as a director, you know. This is, you know, what I learned a lot from him and, and, and I will never forget. Thank you.